Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. Today it is an Indiana Jones themed episode, so we figured it'd be appropriate to bring back the one member here who has the same last name as the doctor himself. Welcome back, Clintiana Jones. Thank you, Nico. Thank Clint you, Ren. Clintiana? <laughs> I'll take it. You know, it's it's as close as you guys can get to, you know. <laughs> to pronouncing your name correctly. Yeah, or, you know, bringing in someone from the movie. God, what a shot. Girl. I love the original Indiana Jones movies. They have a certain like scariness to them that like 80s films have. How is he still alive? This is some dark magic. Oh man, this is my childhood. They're just great movies. They're impeccably filmed. Spielberg is one of the best directors of all time. He's such a good visual storyteller. It sounds like though in your world, Indiana Jones is only three movies long. For me personally, for me personally, it's a trilogy. Well, in today's video, it's five movies long. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. They did the town for real, they did a crazy practical effect here. Whoa! Man, this is so insane. This is the best de-aging I've ever seen in my Whoa. entire life. So, that was good. I'm excited to talk about all this cool stuff. Come along with us as we explore together. Oh, oh my god! god. Man, this is the movie that spawned a thousand Wolfenstein sequels. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Return to Castle Wolfenstein is basically just these movies in a nutshell. But it's about to go down right now. Belloc, uh, he cracked open the, the old Ark of the Covenant. Ooh. That's not good. I love this. Is that fog? That subtle lens flare. Yeah, I'd be out of there if I was those soldiers. Are those ghosts coming out of it? Oh, yeah. It's, to be. it's Moses himself. I mean, the integration of like the ghost effects and the smoke effects, yeah. so perfect. I'm getting Ghostbuster vibes. Yeah, major Ghostbuster vibes and lots of like painting on film. Whoa, it's like creepy. the one CG looking ghost. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I make an emoji face. <laughs> Just like a Muppet. <laughs> Wow, oh, it's so cool! Well, it, like, like goes through their clothes, and you yeah. can see the suspenders. Is that all outside. like just hand tracked painting? Here we go! Here we go! <laughs> God, what a shot! <laughs> Cop out though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we have two incredible prosthetics. I don't want to blow the third one up. I love how they have the fire and everything, like following the flow of the the set. Yeah. As cloud effects. Wait, how the heck did they make that cloud? That's crazy, right? Every single element here is a practical thing that had to be filmed or painted by hand. Like, there's only two ways to generate an image. It's either take a picture of something or paint it. That That's landing? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, was there, that was a crossfade. You're right, that was a crossfade. Those are two shots right there. It's a shot in reverse cutting to a normal shot. So the jet is like sucking in and then when the lid lands, it cuts to a normal shot playing forwards. Oh. So the smoke continues to move off the thing as it flows off of it. There's a moment where lightning like shoots oh. out. Oh yeah. yeah, they all get lit up. Yeah. Are those practical lights in them? Yes. Ooh. Really? Yeah, they looks really nice. It'd be really hard to paint that. And that's the thing that they were saying, Nico, was that it wouldn't look good if we like painted the light in. Like we need some uh, interaction between the light and the characters and the environment. So do they have like light bulbs just like in their shirt exactly. ready to be turned on? Exactly. And a wire running down their pants and into the foggy ground? So they have like flash bulbs, you know, like in their stomach area. And they're like, ah, it's really hot. Ah, ah. It's <laughs> real acting there. <laughs> and their back, like if they were to turn, they would look like the Ninja Turtles. Oh, because they have giant like, batteries. Because oh. they have like the battery, they have like the whole pack on, on their <laughs> wow. back, right? And each one of them has a, a detonator, if you will, like in their hand. Yeah. I, I saw the guy on the left there, he squeezes a trigger in his yes. right hand. As they see the light on the back of the guy in front of wow. them, they squeeze theirs and it goes all the That's way through. That's so cool. This looks really good because they're combining those real flashlights for the heat sources. And then the only effect that's happening is just those painted on orange lines. But most of the work is being done by the bright lights because they look so real. Yeah. This is a great application of combining the effects with practical. Oh, and the face melt, of course. How exactly did they do that? It was different kinds of wax, right? And they're just filming it melt over time? There's a bunch of like mixtures, a bunch of crap that they're layering. Over 18 hours it took them to layer Dude. all this and get it ready to shoot. And it's like two industrial heaters on this guy. The effects guy's got like a little blow dryer for spot jobs if he needs to <laughs> trim up a little thing here and there. So is it stop motion or are they filming it? It's a time lapse. 
Um, I think it was like over 10 minutes or so. I think they were saying too, that they had such bigger plans for that shot too. Like the eyes were supposed to suck back and like it was supposed to be a whole thing and I think he was pretty bummed with it, but. Spielberg was bummed. The effects guy, the effects guy. And the shot's almost ruined by the glasses. I know. I, I noticed that too. I know. Almost. It's, a, it's the perfect tell that this is fast forwarded because they don't fall at the regular speed. Like if they are filming it, they, it falls fast forwarded. And the fact that it's a slow rotation, I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> it's tough. But here's the thing, no one's looking at the glasses. Everyone's looking at his face turning red. Yeah, yeah. fair. And you have a bunch of other beautiful movement, the hat slowly yeah. lowering, the brow melting, the eyes losing their detail and becoming white as they roll back in the head. Those guys are magicians, those practical effects guys, man. They, they just know tricks for everything that they're trying to do. Like Temple of Doom, we'll get into some of the lava stuff. Oh um, man, lava. Yeah, super cool. After oh, I just remembered. I saw a cut of the Loaded Questions episode you're in. Yeah? It's, it's pretty good. Dude, I want to see good. it. I want to see it. Yeah, I'm man. so excited. Oh, we, we should tell them what it is, though. So you guys know the interview show Hot Ones. Well, we wanted to try a new twist in the format. So we have a show called Loaded Questions, where instead of spicy chicken wings, it's a roll of film. And we have until that roll of film is empty to ask a person questions. And the person who's being interviewed is one taking pictures of that roll of film. OK, this might be something right here. I basically just got to wander around my favorite place, and he asked me a bunch of like deep questions and it got real spooky. <laughs> Deep insights, interesting pictures, and a poignant, captivating mirror on which you can reflect upon your journey through life. <laughs> I'm promising big things, but it's actually really good. Jonah's been killing it. So check it out on CoreDigital.com. All right, enough of this, Jones. Let's look at that, Jones. Enough, Mr. Jones. Let's look at Dr. Jones. <laughs> I can be a doctor. I can be a doctor one day. Now let's get out of here. Right, all of us. So Temple of Doom is actually a prequel. It takes place before the first movie. Yeah, a which year I didn't know that until this morning. Me too. When really? I watched, when I watched it yesterday. I, I didn't know like, that until right now. Yeah. I think we got a big problem. Doctor Joe. Shorty. Doctor Joe. No, no, cash. Hey, it's the dude from Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. <laughs> that is crazy to me. Like, yeah. what, a, what an odd career. Look at this shot, by the way. Look at this. That actually fell out of a real airplane. Dude. Whoa. Wait, are there people in that? Dude. Wait. No way. That's a dummy. Oh! <laughs> what a shot. Like, wow! What a, what a shot. Yeah, right? I was sitting there, I was like, <laughs> what? They're doing this? <laughs> even if it's a miniature, even if it's dummies. And they praise still, they praise aced the cameraman. It. They aced it. Like they aced the shot. It's such a long shot. Yeah, and like, is it gonna inflate? Is it gonna inflate? And it just does inflate? There. There's people in there. Oh, and they just, they play the whole thing out. And it lands! And it lands! <laughs> <laughs> like, think about this. You're like, oh, this is wacky. They're gonna save themselves on a freaking little blow up raft. Yeah, right. And then they do it. They do it. And they show you the whole yeah. thing like, oh, uncut. God. It's insane. You want to see the heart rip, Nico? Yeah, I want to see the heart right, rip. Let's take a look at the heart rip. Let's take a look at that whole scene, actually. Let's, like, let's take to the top of that scene. Ren, when's the last time you've seen this? As a kid. All right, get ready. Let me put it this way. I don't remember this shot. <laughs> How is he still alive? Magic. Oh. That's pretty cool. What? Hold up. Burger. <laughs> I feel like the obvious thing here is that they have him doing that on his real chest, they cut away, they come back to a dummy chest. Pause on that. And it matches pretty well, but you can tell it's different. Yeah. Like the lighting is a little different, yeah, the, the texture lighting. of the skin's a little different. What I don't understand is does he rip it? Is there like a pre-scored yeah, hole he just, that he just like kind of punctures through? He just pushes right through Do that you know? latex. Like behind the cast of the dude's chest. They have like two two pieces of metal, like reverse that like accordion out. It's a, it opens up, it goes like that, right? <laughs> and he gets his hand in there, they time it up, right? And then it heals up afterwards, which is a really cool effect. Yeah, that's what I didn't understand. This burger meat thing, it's just reverse shot. He's opening oh, okay. up the little accordion thing behind the latex torso. Oh, it's which out. is ripping it. Mm. Yeah. Because that was the thing that got me is that it actually reformed, not just like pushed back together. That lava Whoa, looks so good. You see that that crusty stuff on the surface? Yeah. It's like looking in a wren's soul. <laughs> yeah. 
So this that's swirling, cool. yeah. That's really yeah, cool. it's a cool shot. In the ILM stages, they built out a 30-foot shaft. They have a miniature cage, miniature guy for these over-the-shoulder shots going down. But for the actual lava itself, it ended up being like glycerin and a other concoction of goopy texture. It's almost like hand lotion kind of a texture that's going through all these pumps, these industrial pumps. And they are throwing in all this cork and plastic and chunks to give you all that crusty rock bits, Whoa, right? okay. And then because the filtration system can't handle the chunks, they have to scoop it all out from underneath and filter out. They have all these guys like filtering out all the crap from this like hand lotion mix and then sending it back up for them to chuck it back in, all being lit from underneath, right? It gives you that nice glow coming up, right? And they said that they had like 15 10K lights, like the brightest, hottest <laughs> lights. And it was like 125 degrees down there for these guys for wow. weeks. Just <laughs> just shoveling, Dude, lotion. shoveling chunks into lotion for like, <laughs> I'm like, God, oh, this is this engine ship in the Titanic, but instead of coal, it's lotion and filtering chunks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, but check out the sick bridge collapse. Oh, this bridge scene is awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Man. Wow. Incredible. Wow. wow. Ooh. Holy crap. That was that had to be a dummy, right? Like But you notice how it's flailing? Are you looking at real people and dummies in the same shot? I so, can't tell. So like wh what I know is that they did the bridge collapse for real. All of those are dummies and they're all like pneumatic dummies. Oh, that's so right. to get that all the air is like going through them and like they're flailing, right? Oh, interesting. Okay, so they've got like some sort of like air canister inside of the dummy yeah. and then like on action they like open it so then it's like like when you have a hose and it's turned on it's going just yes, like, exactly, like that. Exactly. So they're all like the inflatable air guys. Basically, same wow, thing. Wow, it's such. Why don't they use that? Use that anymore? It looks so good. They like literally. They just don't use that in movies ever. Because why? When it's so much easier and cheaper to do a CG double. Yeah, but they still use dummies. Like, why not just use a pneumatic dummy? But then there's that shot where yeah. those guys fall <laughs> off and they, they're falling towards the distance. It looks to be a comp shot, some sort of matte painting down below them. But they seem to be rotoscoped but then they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, those guys, I know for a fact, are stop motion puppets. Stop motion? Yep, on a motion control arm that's pulling them away from camera. It's basically the same effect as Millennium Falcon going into hyperspeed, but it's a guy oh, going, ah, wow. <laughs> yeah. as he goes away from camera. Oh, okay. Eternal life, Dr. Jones. The gift of youth to whoever drinks from the grail. All right, so now we're looking at the third Indiana Jones movie, Temple of Doom. No, uh, Raiders, uh, uh, Raiders of Crusade. the Lost Ark. No, no, Last no. Crusade. Last Kingdom Crusade. of the Crystal Skull. Last Crusade. Dial of Destiny. <laughs> last Crusade. <laughs> oh, okay. We are looking at the Last Crusade. This is the Last Crusade, that's what I said. Only in the leap from the lion's head, he prove his worth. Impossible. Oh, <laughs> is like he such popped a in there? Shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. Boom. So cool. So it looks CG. I'm pretty sure it's just printed out paper. So it looks CG because it just looks uncanny, right? Yeah. Because the perspective like is skewing. But he's comped in. He was comped in there? Yeah. You see his feet slide. Yeah, this is a motion oh, control. Wow. This is a Lord of the Rings style wow. miniature and a foreground character. Yeah, okay. Big I shot. see it now. I didn't see it at first because I was looking at the bridge. That's a miniature that we're looking at on the back wall there. Apparently, the guy painting that bridge, he had the footage projected onto the top of the bridge while looking at the viewpoint of the camera, right? He's right. painting, painting. And then, yeah, reveal the trick, motion control arm, come back around. And then this little bit here, they just had this on black. He faked, like he, he, he didn't was about actually to say, he probably throw. didn't actually throw. It'll, yeah. They look like salt crystals. You can tell it kind of feels like it's making it brighter, the stuff that's over. Yeah. yeah, so what's going on there? It's just two pieces of film being stacked on top of each other, so you're ending up with less exposure through your negative there. That's all that's happening. It's basically, basically screen mode. Yeah. If you ever have composited a lightsaber or a muzzle flash, they're basically just doing the same thing with brightly lit rocks. Otherwise, you have to like blue screen it, which is a huge process. Being able to just shine light through the bright parts and expose, like overexpose your film there is way easier, but things tend to be transparent, so you have to be careful. So we've actually looked at this movie a ton in a previous episode. At the end of this video, we'll have a link to a playlist with all those videos. The original films are classics. Now, Nika's about to throw a little salt on the two most recent Indiana Jones films, but first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Raycon. 
Wow guys, it's already February 2024. The year's flying by. That means Valentine's Day is coming up. Now, no matter what your relationship status is or how you feel about Valentine's Day in general, you gotta admit some things just fit better together. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, Indiana Jones and his whip. You know what else is also a perfect match? Raycon and your everyday routine. It is crazy that these things are called the everyday earbuds because I literally wear them every day. Whether that's in the gym, which is my favorite place to wear them, or just out and about in the world, they are some of the best earbuds you can get and I'm gonna tell you why. Raycons have optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. These earbuds are so comfortable, they actually stay in your ears. Seriously, running, lifting in the gym, moving around, they are not falling out. Just like Indiana Jones, he never knows when he's gonna get a break to relax with some of his favorite tunes. So luckily, these babies have eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. Indiana's also a very honorable guy. You know, he's always finding crazy treasures, a lot of gold, but he's never taking it. He's always donating it to museums. Luckily, he doesn't have to worry about that extra cash because Raycons are half the price of other premium audio brands. And they have all the regular features that you would expect out of a premium earbud. Three customized sound profiles, earbud tap functions, noise isolation, but also awareness mode. Unfortunately, this awesome technology never made it to the Indiana Jones timeline, but if it did, Indiana Jones would tell you to go to buyraycon.com slash quarter crew to get 15% off your your order plus free shipping. All right, so you guys got Salty Sam last week. Now it's Nico's turn. Back to React. Legend says that a crystal skull was stolen from a mythical lost city in the Amazon. This is Indiana Jones 4. It came out 19 years after the previous installment, and I think there is a big technological jump between those. <laughs> you could say that. I mean, this is basically hot off the heels of George Lucas finishing the Star Wars prequel trilogy. This is one of those things like the movie was not very well received. Notoriously not well received. It's, there's a lot of weird jank in it, which is bittersweet and sad because Spielberg and George Lucas and Harrison Ford, like, the team came back. And so it's like, in your heart, you're like, you want it to be good. But it's really rough. <laughs> a lot of parts. So we're going to take a look at this one scene here, which has a combination of some really cool practical stuff some CGI stuff, and <laughs> nothing encapsulates that more than the fridge scene in Indiana Jones. Two, one, zero. Whoa, sick. That was actually cool. It's a miniature town? They did the town for real. They did the town for real, they did a crazy practical effect here. Boom! Whoa! It's freaking rad! Whoa! <laughs> it's amazing! It looks awesome, and the footage of it is super cool. It's all air cannons, by the way. There's an air cannon in each house. And it's just going boom, 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 in sequence. Whoa. Doing the shockwave. Like, they have all this reality around them, and then there's so much unreality. Okay, you gotta do some extensions. Cool, I get it. You gotta cop in the background. All good. I get it. But then they're like, oh, but we also need to add the smoke from the stuff being burned. And they're like, oh, we're starting to get into digital town. And then they just, they break physics again, and they have a second shockwave hit before the actual shockwave hits. Wait, is this not the shockwave? Well, there's the real shockwave, but you'll notice there's a second shockwave that hits right before the big shockwave hits. Right there, zoop. Oh. You're having animators come in and start to spruce up the shot in a way that's not physically accurate, so it's already feeling animated. But then this, they slow it down, and you get I frame. noticed the interpolation. You get frame interpolation, and it makes everything look smeary. Wait, and it makes so it all look undefined. It makes it look like cheap visual effects. It makes it look like there's a visual effects artist who ran out of time and has to hide everything behind motion blur and haze and bloom. Yeah, but I don't think that's a visual effects problem. I think that's like a stylistic, like the director wanted it a certain look type problem. But yeah, it's like I'm not trying to like, I'm not blaming like a visual effects artist for like screwing up a shot. Cause that's, not, that's not what's happening here. This is a, like, it just, it's like all these things are fighting each other, and then you have shots like this car, which there's a lot of hand animation, you can feel like the fake camera shake and the fake lens flares. Dude, wait, wait. It didn't show the fridge getting launched, it just showed the fridge. <laughs> yeah, it just showed there's the fridge. There's an old guy in that fridge, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's just like this. He's not getting tossed, he's like this, yeah. right? So he's good. He's good. From a physics standpoint, none of this makes any sense. 
like that fridge, nothing can go faster than the shockwave. <laughs> it's not like the shockwave hit the fridge like a baseball bat hitting a ball. That's not how it works. The, the shockwave is literally pushing everything outwards faster than anything else could possibly move. None of this is based in reality. And, and then, of course, the fact that like there's a dude in there. <laughs> yeah, I think, I like you said, just <laughs> yeah, he, bracing himself. And, and we're all okay with a little bit of unreality, but like, what are you guys trying to do with the visual? effects here. Are you trying to be painterly and you know go crazy and make a cool matte painting here? Are you trying to make it feel like this is real? Because it's definitely, nobody's following physical rules here. Look at that dim lens flare over his head as he's climbing up the hill from the sun. Like, you can't have a lens flare be at 10% exposure in your shot. It just, it physically does not make sense. And this movie struggles a lot with this. You know, you guys know the monkey scene. Okay, you have real footage of an actor, but like, there's Everything so much else. fake bloom and fake glow and like, you know what it is? I don't know if they're trying to hide mistakes. I think that's it. Yeah? I think that's it. I think it's like, guys, this doesn't, this kind of looks pretty bad. <laughs> and they're like, what can we do? Like, well, let's bloom it up. Let's flare it up. Let's do something. Let's smear it up to like hide the fact that this isn't quite working. Well, I, I will say one last thing, one, one philosophical thing here. When you're working with constraints, especially like technological constraints, you can't just write anything you want in a script. When you write something, you have to think about how you're going to shoot it and how you're going to pull it off. This movie feels like somebody just wrote a script with whatever they wanted in it, and then they shot the movie just following the script. And everybody's, everybody's doing their best in all their individual departments, but it's not under that single cohesive vision of somebody that's writing with visual effects in mind and special effects in mind and cinematography in mind. And you know, that whole stack of creativity isn't really living within one person. It doesn't feel like it is. Why are you chasing the thing that drove your father crazy? So they took another crack at it. <laughs> <laughs> And I've never, I have never seen this movie. Yeah, so this is the intro to the movie. So I know you guys looked at young Indiana Jones in a previous episode, again, yeah. we'll link all this at the end of the video, but this was a big question mark on the movie. You talk about like going into a scene not really knowing how they're gonna handle it, this is the epitome of that. Whoa. Man, this is so insane. Whoa. Yeah, this is the best de-aging I've ever seen in my Whoa. entire life. It's pretty good. You've never seen this clip? No. So Clint, yeah, so Clint hasn't seen any of this. These are fresh reactions. You know what's crazy is that like, it's still, I can still subtly see the CGI once in a while. The shots that are perfect, yeah. they're truly perfect. Exactly, and it's so good that I can't exactly say how it's not perfect. Exactly. So what's insane to me is just the scale of this entire sequence. It's one thing to pull off Harrison Ford looking younger and having it be photoreal and believable, but have that be the case for 25 minutes of a movie through multiple different types of scenes. He's in an action sequence here. Get down, get down. But like through this whole action sequence, every single shot that's like half a second long has a perfectly de-aged Harrison Ford. Yeah, It's like just I forgot. The, the scale of the sequence blows my mind. The funny thing is they kind of want you to forget too. It's like ideally you just yeah. completely slip into watching the movie. <laughs> oh wait, okay, one of the, okay. One of the hardest hits I've ever seen is coming up. I'm ready. Oh, this guy's gonna get clocked. To the Vic, you go the spoils. Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> Dude, Your whole life came up to this moment, Ren. You had is that the hit? <laughs> you had <laughs> built up for that. Yeah, you're really talking that up. <laughs> the sickest heart. The two to the There we go. There we go. Okay, now it's coming up. Now it's coming up. Oh wait, he's back. That wasn't the hit. <laughs> oh! Dude. Oh man. <laughs> Clobber, dude. That was that was the hit I was talking about. Oh man, that, yeah, was, that was so anticlimactic earlier. I'm Clocked. sorry. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that had to have been like an insanely expensive process just because of how much work had to be involved. You broke down exactly how they did this in, in that previous episode, but to like summarize, what's like the one sentence summary of how they did this? This is guesswork. They used the Irishman triple camera rig to capture his face using infrared cameras to triangulate it and get a 3D mesh, which then used to grab his animations and map it onto a CG model 
which they then also ran through a bunch of fancy schmancy deepfake stuff to give it the extra bump of realism. But yeah, like that looks perfect. Yeah, this, perfect. I have literally no notes. It looks flawless to me. It's crazy. It's just that he's not emoting as much as I feel like he would be if he didn't have that, they didn't have that restriction, you know? And there's still a little bit of that like high frequency detail that deepfakes and CG models lack. Mm. Yeah, like this guy here, like watching that guy talk, Look at his neck and how the collar is catching on his skin a little bit and stretching it. You get the wrinkles in those directions. And as he moves, the skin folds underneath his chin kind of fold up on each other. And there's volume and there's physics happening. And you can't quite get this close to deep fakes. And if you look at Harrison Ford, you'll notice like stuff like that's just a little clean. His skin's not getting pulled or stretched. That strap isn't doing anything to his skin. You know, everything's just like lightly on there. You can't quite get in this close because stuff like the skin being pulled on the collar like that and just the volume of flesh and how it moves and squishes and all that kind of stuff. That's where things start to break down and you avoid it. Yeah, but I'm still just so impressed with like how he looked there. Oh, don't get me wrong. This is the best face replacement in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But this is just, you see where the limitations are and where you have to be careful with it. My biggest takeaway from watching this movie is just like, it looks so expensive. I feel like Crystal Skull, it was the first time they really did any sort of digital on that sort of thing. And so all of the action sequences were much faster paced, but they lost all that tangibility. Mm. And I think this movie, they went back to doing the same method, but trying to do it so much better that they regained some of that tangibility. And it was hit or miss for me. Dude. Wait, Clint, what are you doing today? Dude, I am live streaming at this very second, the very next 3D community challenge. Come on over to my channel. If you guys have watched VFX, come on over and let's do some VFX. Effects. It's gonna be a good time on the Punisher channel. Let's do it. Cool. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> See ya.